Throughout the mid-19th century, Ireland was plagued by the Great Famine. The Great Famine destroyed a majority of the potato farms throughout the island, sending its citizens into a panic. Nearly a third of the population's main cash crop was now depleted and began to take a toll on the suffering families. With little or no help from the British government to aid its starving citizens, the Irish began to travel to America for a new life. This video is accompanied by a portrayal of the McGregor family and their journey to America from Southern Ireland. Dad, this sucks. This potato tree doesn't work. The potato tree is great. It's the ground that is bad. The whole ground in Ireland is now unefficient in growing potatoes, which is our livelihood. You gotta make like the Murphys and get out of here. Dad, look at the potatoes, dude. Dry. It's not a potato, son. It's a rock. All we have is grass. We have to skip town like the Protestants did. We gotta get out of here. It's about that time to call it quits. Become an American. The Irish boarded boats that were referred to as coffin ships because of their awful conditions. The ships were hardly furnished, overcrowded, and would barely meet safety regulations. The owners of the ships would pack the minimum amounts of water and food that were required by law just to save money. Due to the terrible conditions, the mortality rate of the passengers on the ships would range between 30 and 40 percent. Keep in mind that these voyages would last anywhere from a couple of weeks up to three months. Now that we have that covered, let's check back in with the McGregor family. This boat isn't so bad after all. Life might have been good back in Munster, Ireland, but I think we have more opportunities in America. Once we make it to Castle Gardens Port, we'll exchange my money, get a nice house, and maybe find a job somewhere, but we'll see. Are you sitting in the bathroom with children? I think you're sitting in the bathroom right now. I went a couple seconds ago. Dad, something bad happened. What happened to you? I was eating my potatoes. A bunch of guys came to beat me up. They took everything I had. All my wages. Hey, I raised no wussy. I'm sorry, Dad. Oh, you gotta join a gang or something. You gotta buck up. I'll try working out. All right, I'm don't sorry, don't disgrace his family name, the McGregors. Irish immigrants would take their first steps on American soil at the Castle Garden Port in New York City. After leaving the ships, the passengers had to pass a mandatory medical evaluation before signing the necessary documents to become an American citizen. Traveling arrangements and currency exchanges were also handled at the port. Unfortunately for the Irish, Americans would capitalize on their unfamiliarity and were sold tickets to incorrect destinations and were also shorted money during exchanges. Let's see how the McGregors are doing. I think we got that medical evaluation done with. So don't get the point of turning your head when you cough. But, uh, you know, we're gonna be, you should see a doctor soon for your arm there, son. You guys rubbing some dirt on it really didn't help too much. All right, you're concussion a little bit better. Thinking straight, speaking English. All right, we're good. What about you, daughter? Not feeling better at all? All right, we gotta see that doctor and figure this out. Once we make the currency exchange, I'll have my Irish money exchange for good old American cash and we'll be on our way. Yeehaw! Got that dirty potato money. Here to see what this American money looks like. Interesting. Let's see how this does. Thank you. Immigrants were made aware of their medical conditions after leaving their evaluation and more than likely were suffering from typhus. This epidemic started because of the conditions on the ship. Luckily for the Irish immigrants who came later, typhus was somewhat under control, but still had a mortality rate of 11%. The living facilities weren't that much different from the ships. Most of the poor immigrants settled in the Five Points Lower Manhattan District in crowded tenements. These slums were notorious for their diseases, prostitution, unemployment, and violent crimes. Let's check back in with the McGregors. I think we saw a doctor and found out you have typhus. Good luck surviving. It's 10% survival rate. You might be able to do it. Your, your arm will heal too. We'll see. 
Man, it's too bad we got screwed over. I don't know how much this is worth, but not enough to really see the doctor and get treatment. At least they told us where to live next, the Five Points Lower Manhattan District. Should be able to find a nice little slum over there, make a living. We'll see what happens. America. Nearly 43% of all Irish employed in New York City worked as unskilled laborers or domestic servants. These were among the lowest paying jobs in New York City at the time, and usually would pay no more than $10 to $15 a week. Men would typically take the hard labor positions while the women found themselves working as servants in American families who viewed these services as demeaning. Women also found jobs in factories as seamstresses where they would also receive unfair wages. Those who didn't work would join gangs in their neighborhoods. The Wyos were a gang who largely consisted of criminals ranging from pickpockets to murderers and later graduated into extortion, prostitution, and murder for hire. We'll see how the McGregors are doing. I think I found that mining job. Don't know what I'm mining for, I just know it's shiny. Making a little bit of money now should be fine, but it's about time you two pitch in a little bit. Once it get better, oh, by the way, mortality rate for typhus is actually 11%, not 10%, so not too much more grim, but we'll see how that goes. Dad, this isn't working out. Sister's still sick, we have no money, and we're still living in a slum. We what? gotta do something about this. What are you gonna do about it? I'm gonna join the wild, Dad. You better not! Screw it. What'd you say, boy? Don't worry, you're gonna be feeling better soon. Once you do, uh, some women around the neighborhood said they're gonna put us in a good word for us in the factory, so thank you. Irish immigrants were instrumental in the Union's victory over the Confederates in the Civil War. It is estimated that nearly 150,000 Irish immigrants fought for the Union. Their services were sometimes forced because they unknowingly signed up for the draft while obtaining their American citizenship. Some were eager to fight for President Lincoln anyway and formed their own brigades. The draft led to what is known as the New York Draft Rights of 1863. These rights were triggered by the approaching draft day and resulted in over 100 deaths. The deaths were also racially motivated and the culprits are now recognized as the working class Irish immigrants. Wealthy citizens were able to pay the $300 fee to be excused from fighting, but Irish immigrants could not afford this luxury. But let's get back to the McGregors. Great news. Well, I also have some really bad news. I uh, found out that when we accepted citizenship, uh, I also got enrolled into the Civil War. So I'm probably going to get drafted. Let's see how that goes. Found up. We don't need you anyway, Dad. Me and the Wilds, we were in this house. We got the politics, we got jobs lined up. We got this down. We'll do a good job. These southerners are ruthless. You damn bastards will never take my lucky charms! You damn bastards will never take my lucky charms! <laughs> 